Hi, welcome. In this video, we're going over a scrambled paragraph problem from the Specialized High School um, exam. And here, we're starting with the sentence that says, Chinese sailors used magnetic compasses long before Europeans did. Now, in these questions, they'll always throw in the first sentence of your paragraph right here. Now, your job is to sort these out down here in the correct order following right from this first sentence now there are many techniques that people talk about in order to break these down look for what your first sentence is uh, and, and how to figure out the order keywords and all that stuff I I just prefer to read through them right I read through them and I kind of see what makes the most sense so scanning through these if I jump down to to T right here right I can see that it says well in fact some of the earliest compasses in recorded history were made by magicians in ancient China. Now this, for me, strikes me as the second sentence, right? Because it's following up from the idea that Chinese sailors use magnetic compasses. That's what they're doing, right? Long before Europeans did. And then it goes into detail. And it's further going into detail saying, in fact, some of them, right, some of the earliest compasses were made by magicians in ancient China. So it's kind of zooming in, right? First is saying that Chinese sailors used magnetic compasses long before Europeans did. And then it's getting into more detail, zooming in saying, well, specifically, it was the magicians in ancient China that made these compasses. So I mean, look at Q, for example. Why can't that be a candidate for a second question? Well, it says, then, hanging in a windless place, the magnetized end of the needle would always point to the south. Well, I don't know about you, but if someone just threw that sentence next after the first sentence, I don't know what they're talking about, right? Then implies that it's following something. Following what? Well, in the opening statement, we're just talking about Chinese sailors. So I don't know how this next sentence would come into play. So that's not a candidate for the second question. Second sentence, excuse me. And here, look at R. It says the magician would magnetize a needle. Well, right, that has to be our third sentence, right? Because... And it can't be our second, because who, what magician? Well, from the first sentence, you'd have no idea what they're talking about. So for me, it's it, when T, the sentence right here, finishes right with by saying that magicians in ancient China made these compasses, and then they talk about magicians in the next sentence, it's a natural thing to think that R follows T. So I, so far, we know that we start with this sentence up here. Then we say, in fact, some of the earliest compasses in recorded history were made by magicians in ancient China, and then just read it, see if it makes sense. Well, yes, next, they say the magician would magnetize a needle and balance it on the rim of the cup to act as a compass. So it's talking about the balance, right? The way this needle would balance on the rim of a cup to act as a compass. And then notice, just by reading the next sentence, S, this balancing act, right? When you first come across this sentence as you're scanning, this balancing act, I know that wouldn't be our second sentence because, again, in the first sentence, they're just talking about Chinese sailors. Here, this balancing act, what balancing act? It can't be the second sentence, right? Or even the third because the balancing act it's referring to is right here in the third sentence. So doesn't it make sense that S needs to be the next sentence right in our list? So we have, we have T and then R and then S, right? And now, well, we have two choices left. And again, let's read through them. So U says, a more effective way to keep the needle free to move in response to its magnetic pull was to attach a strand of silk to the center of the needle with a tiny piece of wax. So you can picture that this, this needle's rotating, right? And this silk and this wax are somehow anchoring it in the compass. Um, so it's saying basically it's it's a con it's contrasting, um, you know, from R. It's saying from S. Excuse me. So U is contrasting S. It's saying that the balancing act was hard to maintain and the needle often fell off. So this wasn't very effective. This balancing act. So in contrast, right? In contrast to that, we have a more effective way of doing this. Now let's go back to Q and make a decision here because Q says then hanging in a windless place, right? The magnetized end of the needle would always point to the south. So we have to make a decision, right? What, what should be last? Well, it says, S, this balancing act was hard to maintain and the needle often fell off. 
If I said Q was next, then hanging in a windless place, the magnetized end of the needle would always point to the south. That doesn't really seem to follow, right, from S, right? Because we're talking about this balancing act, and our focus is saying that the needle's, you know, is often falling off. Why would we suddenly jump and say that, the, you know, when the needle would hang in a windless place, the magnetized end of the needle would always point to the south? I think U is our candidate for the next one, right? Number five, because it's contrasting S. It's saying, hey, well, there's a more effective way to do it. And here's what they did. So you can say U and then finish off with Q because what happens now, right, is that the needle is actually able to work. Q is describing how the compass would work after the silk and the wax is used. And that's a little tricky for me, but I think that order makes the most sense. So that's an example of a scrambled paragraph. I hope we do many more. Thanks a lot.